this th oh, yep, there's a little theme. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Thorne, how do you feel about that last match? I am so amped for our team. Watching them crush, crush the other team was just really, it was really sad. I mean, we are all, we are all team players here, and we congratulate uh, our opponents on their strife and their determination. But man, did it feel good to just leave him in the dust there. You know, our, uh, did you know, Taylor, that the majority of our um, Magnolia Gold team are ninth graders? What? Yes. That's, see, actually, I did know that. We picked our prospects, just like you would in the NFL. We're going to groom them for the next four years. That's right. And then we're going to send them straight to the professionals a year early. That's right. So if you think we're on fire now, just wait until four years from now. We are going to be blazing through these league uh, matches. And it looks like uh, we're getting ready to start. Is that is that correct? Is that what that timer counts? Yes, that means, means it's the end of Thorn Corner. Boop, 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 boop. Hit him with your catchphrase, Thorn. <laughs> Happy V Wombo Combo! <laughs> oh yes, that was it. There it was. So uh, our very refined and experienced shoutcast coach, who is telling us we shouldn't use his name, so we will just call him Fluffy Hair, Fluffy Jacket told me that the best catchphrase to shout in a league match is happy feet, wombo combo, woo. So, get ready for some of that, my oh, peeps. Yeah, how exciting. How exciting. Wow, we have catchphrases now? We really are pushing What's your the catchphrase, budget. Taylor? I'm feeling lucky. Brilliant. <laughs> really? Because how you shook your head <laughs> seemed a little Taylor's disappointed. Taylor's catchphrase is... I'm feeling lucky. I'm feeling lucky. Uh, ladies and gentlemen at home, you really need to see the facial uh, cues that go along with this catchphrase. It really is not complete without it. That is just a blessing that we it's all true. get here at Magnolia High School. It's all right, 30 true. seconds until minions spawn. This is it, Taylor. Oh, I didn't, I didn't notice we're red side now. We were blue side the first two games. What do you think about... The strategy, that's going to make us have to switch some stuff up. How do you feel about that? You know, they might try to be throwing us for a loop, but our team, they, they're they really picking themselves up. They are right in that high of just coming off a win. So I think, I think we're going to be okay. So what exactly gets switched up when the colors swap? Great question. So basically by starting on red side, which is the not favorable side uh, by most pro players, coincidentally enough, it means that you're on the back side of Baron and the front side of Dragon. Now, Dragon is a hotly contested objective, but the impact of Dragon, you could say, is not as high, especially when compared to Baron. So having the back side of Baron means if the enemy team is taking Baron, you have to walk all the way around the top or the bottom or try and poke from behind the wall. There's just not really a good spot. And usually in solo queue, and with teams that don't communicate very well, it creates uh, uh, the team to become split very easily mm -hmm. or to funnel through in one direction and just get picked off. So do you think our team has the synergy and collaborative skills required in order to take this red side to a win? I do. I really do. We've been playing a lot around Baron Pit, especially with Rift Herald pre-15 minutes. We've been talking about what we can do to uh, take advantage of those early objectives. So I feel like... If we usually if we have the choice, we take blue side, but by by saying they can have first pick or sorry, by saying we'll take red side, we have they there must have been some communication where they said that they were going to watch out for what they need to watch out for. I do know, though, sorry to change the subject, but the bot side, we were uh, were a little nervous about this Alistair play uh, Alistair in the first game. They were able to get a lot of combos off and really punish our vein or, or sorry we weren't vain then um but really punish us early so i know that's something that is going to be huge in this matchup if we can not allow the alistair to bully our vein we'll be okay but i think this support player is really a really good cowboy a really good cowboy indeed all right so we're in the first few minutes of the game now right taylor 
That's correct, yes. So uh, how's it looking? How, how are we doing right now? So let's take a look at farm, where we're at right now. Everyone's about even. Uh, Draven is a little ahead. He's about half a wave ahead. And he's pushing in the the wave under the tower a lot, which is making it very hard for our Vayne, especially early game, to get last hits off. She is getting some trade damage, but I know that Pod in this whole his, this whole time in his head is thinking, I can't go out too far, I can't go out too far, I can't go out too far. And because he's having that mentality, it is going to make it very hard for him to farm. Um, I think about the 15 minute mark, uh, we'll know pretty well how that bot lane's going to go. Velkos taking a lot of trade here. Oh, he's going to get the ignite. First blood goes to Hui Trin. All right, Hui. Yeah, let's give it up for our Christmas Hui. He uh, actually, you can't see this, but he has his lucky Christmas bow right there next to his computer. And I think I think it's bringing him the magic he needs tonight. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. But, you know, you want to know a fun fact about Hui Trin? I would love to. When Hui Trin plays League of Legends, especially when he's playing competitively, he actually has his favorite YouTube playlist up in the background so he can listen to music to, and I quote, get him amped up during the game. Excellent strategy. You know, I do the same thing when I'm uh, trying to get amped up. I have I have my playlist. It's called Inspired uh, on, my, on my Spotify profile. Can you give us a couple of the songs that are on this playlist? Yes. Uh, the first one is from the Batman Lego movie. It's called Friends Are Family. Mm -hmm. And I know he's a big Lego Batman fan. Hang on one second, though. It looks like there's a big trade going on with their jungler. Speedball going off. This might be enough to kill the Zach. Zach's passive is proc'd. Ramus is going to try and get these down before mid lane can get there. I don't think he's going to have enough time, though. Urgot's pretty low. Swain's trying to get there. I think this might have been an overcommitment. He might be able to trade for the 1v1. Oh, Zach flashes, though. Oh, but Ramus might... No, he's not going to be able to get out. And that might be a two for nothing. Maybe a one... No, nope. two for nothing going to Woodbridge. Oh, no, we did pick up a kill. So it was a two for one. This makes us even. And going to bot lane, Draymond getting some free access thrown at Tarek. But it looks like things are going to mellow out now. So, sorry, back to your question. What is on Hui Trin's YouTube playlist? Yeah, so we got, uh, f sorry, what's it? Friends. Friends are family. Friends are family. Batman, and that's, the, like you know what? I think that's really um, symbolic of our team's uh, MO here. You know, they're all friends and they function together like a family at most times, right? When they're in the game. Oh, absolutely. They have it together and... And at times, maybe they get a little a little agitated, like family members do, yes, right? Yes, I've actually heard we call Pond mom. Really? Yes. So the friends are fa That is just the theme Literal. we have going on at Magnolia High School Esports. Good to know. All right, so tell me another song on the Hui Trin Amped Up okay, playlist. Okay, so uh, another song is... Uh, have you ever seen the Lorax? The I have seen the Lorax. Excellent. So With uh, Danny DeVito... Taylor Correct. Swift pops her voice in and out of that one. Yeah, I got you. I got the you. The song Let It Grow. Yes. We say let it grow. That is, I catch we hum in that tune almost every other day. That is another one that he plays on that, that is on that list. It's it's a very wholesome playlist. It's beautiful. I th I think I might need to, you know, I'm. Oh, no. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but Urgot landed the old. Bruce was almost out of there with Swain. So close. It looks like he didn't have flash up, or he had flashed earlier in the trade, which was it means that it wasn't able to use when the Urgot came in with the ult. Oh, you hate to see it happen. It's okay. We're still we're still tied up right now, right? We're at three three. Correct. Three three. Uh, about even on gold oh, right now. Currently, they're up about four k. You can see up here at the top, mm -hmm. but that doesn't really. Or no, sorry. 400 gold but split that amongst five players it's not that big of a lead um, easily we could bounce back by winning a team fight right it looks like our gold is going up by the second so i think i think we'll catch up oh we paused for a second that's all that's all right we'll be back here in right now <laughs> yeah sometimes there's just too much action for the screen to handle mm -hmm. and it needs to take a break Looks like Yasuo, no fear, running up on to Velkaz again. Oh, Hui's going to prop, 
prop proc his ignite and his passive it is enough to secure the kill onto the yasuo that means the yasuo is two three put but our velkaz is three oh they need to watch out for that i think that was a huge advantage that we took control of last game is that he was able to secure a lot of kills get way far ahead of his lane opponent and then when it became time to team fight they weren't prepared for the power spike that we brought All right, and uh, as for those of you who have been in the stream for the entire game, we know that one of our players, Bruce, is playing from home still. Uh, how, is, how has that been playing out in this third match so far? It's been interesting. Uh, in the first game, he played for the team comp. He played, hang on one second, I want to comment on this fight here. We're going to pick up this Urgot kill. Zach is coming in. I think it's going to be too late, but he jumps in. Can we secure the Urgot? He's pulling us into the Urgot. It might be enough. It is enough to secure the Urgot. And then I think we're going to kill the Velikaz. I mean, sorry, the Zac here as well, which is going to give us two free kills. Yasuo coming in for the cleanup, but it's a 1v3. If we can keep Yasuo. Oh, get the taunt. Sorry, I'm very excited for this. Velikaz missing be. his Q. He does hit the ult, though. He's going to get one of them. Oh, if we can just kill him before he gets... Perfect. All right, so that would be a huge trade win for us, putting us back up in gold advantage, back up in kill advantage, and that's going to be enough time to farm a bunch of lanes without having to worry about it. But Urgot teleporting back to lane. He's going to try and pick up the Swain. I think he's going to get it. It's very close. Vilkaz doing whatever he can to slow and stop him. I think that ult's coming back up, though. No, it's not. He has too much. Oh, no, there's no way he's going to be able to get it off. Urgot's on the run now. He's on the wrong side of the jungle. Velkaz, Swain are chasing him. Ramus is powerballing, trying to get there. He's going to pop the berry, though, and get into the Baron pit. I'm sure of it. No, he's going to go back in. It might be. No, he's got him. Excellent. That puts us up. Bot lane going all in on the Alistair. Switching over to the Draven. Taric ult dropping in time. Trading for damage. Exhaust going on to him. Going to try and get the kill. Makes Draven flash, so he gets out of the stun. Draven ults to try and get some extra damage on him. Now it's time to run away. Draven is coming back at them now that they're no longer in vulnerable. Tarek in a bad spot. The heal goes off to give the movement speed. Draven backs away, but Alistair goes in for the bunts. And now Draven's running back. This trade is going back and forth, back and forth. I think it's going to fizzle here, though, because Vayne's low on mana, Tarek's low on mana, Draven has zero mana. Velkaz and Yasuo fighting again. We've seen a lot of this 1v1 action. If Velkaz can hit his E and get out of there. No, but he's trying to bait him while Ramus comes in for the gank. He misses his cube because he's blind. Can't see it. Oh, Zach flying in causes Ramus to leave. Yasuo gets the ult off. Velkaz so low. He tries to ignite to get a little bit of damage in. It's going to trade for the one for one. Now we're going to have a battle of the junglers. Now Zach is up a level and he used his smite. I'm not sure who wins this fight in a normal situation. <laughs> It's going to be close for sure. But, oh, Ramus is committing, but no, he doesn't want it anymore. He power balls away. He's going to get out from under the tower. Zach has no way to chase him. Meanwhile, Swain and Urgot fighting top. Oh, gosh, look how fast he is. That ghost is giving him so much movement speed. Oh, and the blind E to try and get him. It's That's just crazy. Looking at the gold differentials here. Man. That Yasuo is still staying relevant. The Urgot, sorry, I'm not paying attention to the Urgot. I saw a flash here. Gets a free, we get a free pickup on the kill. Once again, putting us a little bit ahead. 1.3, no, sorry. Yeah, 1.3k. It's a sizable difference. That's going to give us a small item like a longsword or something. That could be the difference in a team fight. Look, going back to gold differentials, it looks like everything's about the same. It could be either way. A lot of bounties have been cashed in.
All right, hello, ladies and gentlemen, joining us here on our Twitch stream. So we are on a little bit of a pause right now. Um, so I have Miss Potted in here joining me, Miss Thorne, as we wait for our team to get back in hello. the game. Hi, everybody. Uh, so I just had an interesting chat with the team during the pausing. And you know, it's completely within the rules where they can pause the game. And in this case, um, the other team um, chatted and just said that they were rebooting, that something happened with the computer, which is totally, you know, it's understandable. Um, but intriguingly, um, it seems like that could be a tactic deployed by teams that sort of, uh, I'm not saying that Woodbridge did this, absolutely not, but it's an interesting thing to notice. It's kind of like calling a timeout toward the end. Ooh, Taylor seems very happy. I can't comment on what exactly happened because I don't see, but I can see Taylor is really excited. Yes, yeah, so you anyway, can expect good things to come. I can expect good things to come. Stay tuned, <laughs> Magnolia Gold uh, fans. So anyway, uh, they can technically pause it for half an hour at a time and then start the game up again, and then another half hour, start the game up again, and pause for another half hour for a total of an hour and a half um, total pausing um, of a game, which, again, is just... You know, I mean, I watched this happen last year. I was sat through the first season, but this is an interesting rule. And I wonder if any teams out there have resorted to using that kind of a tactic just to delay the team, to push students who maybe don't have the ability to stay at their school, you know, till 8 o'clock at night um, out of the game. What do you think about that, Ms. Thorne? You know, um, it's a pretty, I think it's a pretty cruel tactic to use. And I would hope that the sportsmanship within our NASA community is refined enough that teams aren't going to be using those tactics. And I would certainly want to address that issue. You know, we are only in our second year with NASA and a lot of things, they're, they're very open to our uh, comments and our feedback. And if this was a trend, if this was a, a trending tactic that happened multiple times, I would certainly want to bring that up as a possible concern but you know what our team they are so dedicated and I know some of these guys here they would if they were able they would stay here until midnight if they had to in order to take our team to a victory and I just I love that mentality that we have here with our with our boys I, I completely agree I've seen nothing but good sportsmanship um, at Magnolia High School and honestly with the other teams as well I haven't noticed anybody you know, resorting to a tactic like that, but it's just interesting if somebody wanted to game the system, um, that that is possible, you know, according to the rules of the game. Um, but you're absolutely right. NASF has been wonderful with listening to advisors, with, um, you know, trying to uh, adjust their game time and all of that to um, our schedule. All right, the oh, game Ms. has Potter, resumed. Looks like we're back here. Mm -hmm. So uh, for those of you at home, you should know that Ms. Pominen and I are not the most expert of league players. So we are going to give you the commentary as we see it. And uh, feel free to chime in and give us some comments and feedback on our commentary. So it looks here, we're looking at um, a spider crawly thing. Oh, but we're flipping <laughs> back over to, oh, there's a dragon. There's a dragon and it looks like there's a lot of things happening around the dragon. That dragon looks pretty untouched, though, and it looks like he's going to get some trouble pretty soon. Uh, 6226, you better watch out. Um, and then, oh, we got some some hedgehog spinning spiky <laughs> things happening, and that just looks like trouble. But luckily, we are in it. That's, the, oh, we got... Creepy Crawly over here. We better, uh, it looks like uh, our eagle, eagle man is going to take care. <laughs> Mama Nakachi is running after uh, Jadier, which I believe is their top player. Oh, we've moved back to um, taking over the dragon. Um, I will say, as Miss Thorne po pointed out, we are monitoring the chat. So if you are on the stream chat, if you are following, um, we'd love to hear from you. I've been kind of monitoring that yes. um, this whole round mm -hmm. or this mm -hmm. whole uh game mm -hmm. red team slaying the dragon good job oh, guys. right red team okay so bringing Magnolia it in with gold. those dragon slays oh Magnolia gold gets all of that which is fabulous yeah. um specifically plat five good job that's right uh, breaking news going back to that we playlist getting amped up with burning up by the jonas brothers you know miss pondon i was a huge jonas brothers fan when i was a high school student myself i did not know that about you it's true i can see that being the case it's true 
I have two DVDs. <laughs> you have it's two really DVDs. Embarrassing. I, I really appreciate that you're so honest on this stream chat, and I look forward to shoutcasting with you in the future. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, just taking a note of the score. So we are 13 to 6. That's we right. are more than double their kills, and then we also are outclassing them a bit in our gold. So yes, we're uh, up a thousand and a half gold. Yep. You know, this is the team that forfeited the last game when we had too big a lead. You know, they just didn't want to go through that. And I kind of understand that mentality. Woodbridge didn't want to know that they were going to lose and then play out the rest of the game as they were going to lose. And a lot of our guys had not really seen that before. So that's a real credit to Magnolia Gold that we are doing so well that the team is forfeited. And that, again, that's the oh, first man. time for us. All right. Plat 5 Gamers on a killing spree. That is Nathan. He is fabulous. He's a freshman in my English class, and I'm really proud of him. In fact, most of this team is actually quite young. Freshman and sophomores dominating um, our play. We have one is... Pond a junior, I believe so. Pond? Yeah, do you know? I, I don't know. We'll have to ask him because, okay. you know, um, fortunately, Matt, I don't think either of us have him in one of our mm. English classes, which no. we would absolutely love to have all these students in our class if we could because not only are they incredibly dedicated gamers, but they are outstanding hardworking, motivated students. So we just love it's having those types of members it represent our team at Magnolia here. It's true. Um, there is a lot of commotion happening at the gaming part of the room. And again, we are just trying to comment on the game that we are seeing with the delay in the stream. Um, but I'm hearing a lot of shouting. It seems like a lot of good things to come. Again, we are 16 to 7, Magnolia to Woodbridge. So that's pretty fabulous. Looks like they're on killing sprees. Wow, Taylor, our other shoutcaster, is leaping across galloping, the room. Galloping. Galloping yes. is actually the most accurate accurate verb here um so let's see oh this guy is channeling what he is channeling i couldn't tell you but it, he must be scared because look at our team we are just getting those plus 33s looks like some heals happening over for mm -hmm. uh for our armory friend over there but oh creepy crawly with those legs he's he's still gonna try to take down these little guys but i don't know it's not looking good it's not looking good for them all right, Pond over here doing some very stealthy, stealthy stuff while Squidlegs just Squid legs. crawls across the screen. We're being scoffed at in our stream. Hey, it's our first shoutcast. Yes, please understand that we are Plot not Plot 5 Gamer is unstoppable. Again, that's Nathan. We are up it. by a 10-point lead. Can you believe that it's by the 10 points? I really can't, especially after that first game. You know, I was a little worried, especially because they kept blocking, you know, some of our, our main... Uh, players you know like zoe again i know hui is champion at zoe oh they're going after the dra or this t i believe it's the crab and at this point are almost at thirty thousand gold leaving the other team with just under twenty eight thousand mm -hmm. it's it's looking pretty grim but you know i don't want to get too cocky yet okay look uh, at this battle here it's still a fresh game anything could happen mm -hmm. all right quite a little melee over here Red team has summoned the Rift Herald. You know, when I think of a Rift Herald, I just imagine mm. uh, somebody coming out of a glowing crack in the ground, screaming and selling the latest <laughs> news on how Magnolia <laughs> Gold is killing it right now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, declaring pond. Okay, let's see if we get any back. Blue turret destroyed. Blue turret is destroyed. This is huge. This is huge. Magnolia Gold taking it into the victory zone. It looks like we're getting close, but again, it's still 18 minutes left in the game. And we have Taylor Zach. back here to give us some details. Zach launching in for a huge fight. He's going to get the Terrak in time, but everyone's fighting under turret. They're taking multiple team shots here. You can see the Alistair's low. Everybody's low. Hui does his death beam. Kills every single member on the enemy team. Hui. Puts us already Hui, up kills. five Taking kills. Taking the full Christmas board Christmas Hui ace. You know who I want to thank for this this uh, play that just happened here, Miss Thorne? I want to thank the Jonas Brothers. They they burned it up. They took them out. They drove it all the way home. And we can thank Nick, Joe, and Kevin for giving our man the confidence and strength he needed to blow him out of the water. I got to say, Rose? it's like we're living in the year 3000. Like we're living in the year 3000. Thank you, Taylor, for that throwback. Well, you know what? You know what? I think I've caught the love bug 
for Magnolia Gold, Taylor. I sure have. I sure and have. <laughs> there goes my discography for Jonas Brothers songs. That's all I got. So one thing we didn't cover just now is Red Team is just the name of the drag queen band that is supported by the Red Team Theater. Thank you. It's crazy. I mean, it's crazy to look at it. We have more than double the amount of kills, right? D yeah, more than double and then some. But they're only down... 3,000 gold. That's because Woodbridge has been doing a fantastic job of farming, of keeping up on jungle camps right when they spawn, of getting objectives as well. Now, it doesn't look like it on Dragon, but like for things like like Scuttle Crab and, and, and things like that, you get a lot of gold from that, a lot of gold value. And although we're winning the team fights, it is scary. We're not winning it by a lot. It's still definitely anyone's game. But it looks like it's really just the Yasuo that's keeping Woodbridge in the game. If we can focus on the Yasuo, pick him early in a team fight, it should be pretty easy. Now that Draven is starting to get scary with 178 farm, he does have his Infinity Edge and his Zeal. He's going to start chunking really hard. But I think our Vayne is going to be able to answer that, as long as they don't get picked by crowd control. Hello guys, my name is Coyote, Discord Manager, and uh, editor of the video, probably. Um, let's see, oh, okay, we got this. Fumikachi, dominating, okay. That all is so nice, it's popping everyone, we're taking it away, the power spikes are huge for us. This is just an amazing game. Going guys. for the Baron, easy, getting a free Baron. Spectacular game, guys. Um, no invasions, as I can see. Okay. Okay, yeah. He also that. coming up to try and take something, but there's no way he's going to get crown controlled into eternity. He's trying to get to the Baron to kill the Baron to try and steal it, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's ours. We take Baron. Going to the mid lane now, not even going back. We're so confident in what we've got. We don't need any more items. We don't need to shop. Bruce is going to go pushing bot lane. Free towers with that Baron buff. So taking mid tower now, we're just going to run it down with the Baron. No worries. Now we're moving into the enemy team's base. Okay, we got this, guys. All right. Ready for the next team fight. Boom, Akachi taking towers. Free free minions. Cashing in. Now it looks like everyone's going to go back and shop. They've taken their towers. We have a minute 30 till Dragon spawns. Taking the scuttle crab that way we have vision for the next dragon. Meanwhile, Yasuo top, sorry, top side, is going to try and get some of that big farm in preparation for the next team fight. I think our team's got a taste though for what they need to do to win this. All they have to do is take that Yasuo out of the game, and I think that kind of makes the Woodbridge collapse. Ooh, got the stun <laughs> nice with Tarek. Making the Draven flash. Vayne, meanwhile, chasing. But gets bumped up by the Alistair. Cute flashes with the Q in. Going to pick the Draven. Stun's going off. Free in him. I think this is GG. Here comes Ramus powerballing and immediately going right onto the Yasuo. Getting the taunt off. Tarek ults. Big team fight happening. Zach pulls up a couple people, but it doesn't matter because Tarek's already ulted. Meanwhile, Velkos in the back. Death beaming. Everybody. Towers. He's slamming onto our Ramus. He doesn't mind. He powerballs back in. With that, though, it looks like two have been picked. The Yasuo and the Draven. There's no one left to do damage on Woodbridge. So the Nexus is going to fall. Meaning that in a three series, Magnolia wins. Victory, guys. 
All right, this is Miss Thorne here, wrapping it up, wrapping it up. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Magnolia Esports Twitch. Uh, we could not be more proud of our Magnolia Gold League of Legends players. And we are now 2-0 undefeated League of Legends team in week two of our NASA tournament. Miss Pond, what do you have to say about that? Um, I am also just so proud, so overjoyed. You know, that first match really kind of scared everybody but then we dominated the second two the second and third match also the boys are noticing right now that the standings in nasif put magnolia gold in fourth place out of all of the teams fourth place fourth place out of fourth 82. place out of 82 games so fabulous teams. job again this is uh, the cinderella story coming from behind it's the miracle as taylor pushed it and uh, cannot be more proud of our guys let's celebrate them and again let's grow the stream tell your friends go sets go sense thank you so much for joining us we cannot wait to be back here with you next week wednesdays at 3 to 3 30 ish We'll definitely keep you posted on when we'll be back next. All Have right. a lovely evening. You too. Keep gaming, y'all.